listening to Nasty Knuckles, the Hockey Outlaws podcast, with your hosts, Terry Nasty Sotomayor and former Philadelphia Flyer enforcer, Riley Cote, as they go behind the scenes with your favorite NHL players. Time to face off. All right, welcome back. What's happening, Nasty? What's up, Rigorelia? What are you saying, buddy? Well, back in the lab here, oh, back yeah. on Zoom. Back on Zoom, unfortunately, but it just had to be done this way this week. It did. It did. Our guest, AJ Galanti, yes. uh, couldn't make it in person. And uh, our production crew is graduating. Where are they? Debo, baller. Congrats, Congrats. boys. Congrats. Just probably a drunken mess right now. I would think well, so. Well, maybe after. Maybe, maybe after, not yeah. Before. Yeah, right. But Pacing congrats, themselves. boys. Congrats. Congrats. Don't worry. We got it all. Nah, yeah, Nasty's going to be editing. Don't oh. worry. Yeah, right. Can barely turn on a computer, but. I barely can do that. I barely turn <laughs> my phone on, for God's sakes. So um, what's going on in hockey land? We, well, had, we, we took had a the... week off last week. Yep. Traveling. Couldn't make it. Uh, since we last talked, Flyers wrapped up their season. Thank God, finally. Yeah, I think um, they're probably, I think everybody's just ready for it to be over. I think so. Clear their heads and start try. the retooling process. Yeah, it's quite a bit of work, you know, and uh, probably that needs to be done and oh, some yeah. things, holes to be, uh, you know, patched Patch. up. Yeah. <laughs> and rebuilt. Um, yeah. And just uh, be interesting to see what happens, honestly. Like, kind of looking forward to seeing exactly what goes on yeah um you know a lot of injuries hopefully guys get healthy that that would help a lot of things of obviously. course yeah um it's been a, a lot of things being said about ryan ellis you know like he went missing quote unquote he's yeah. <laughs> he went missing um but you know i from what you know i was reading a few things just i guess you know he was pretty frustrated I guess so. Uh, it's a long season of sitting around and yeah. doing nothing. And so, you know, hopefully they get that worked out. He says he wants to be here now. Um, I sure hope so. Yeah, I hope he does. Um, and then, you know, the other guys getting some guys back from injury, obviously, and then uh, filling in some holes. You got some big shoes to fill with yeah. uh, Claude. Um, unless something happens and he comes back, which I don't really think is going to happen. So. Um, I you don't know. think so. No but, matter what happens in Florida, I really don't think he's coming back. I, I don't either. But uh, speaking of Florida and the playoffs, um, they had a big win yesterday, brought mm -hmm. the series back to two. I was getting a little nervous there. Oh, my there. God, me too. Um, anything can happen anyway. It's 2-2. Two -two, so um, tonight's a big game in that series. Um, yeah. Who do you have coming out of the East? Uh, I think I'm going to go with Pitt. Really? Mm -hmm. With Louis Domingue? With the main Louis. Wow. No. Okay. No. Hey, what do you got? A, I don't, I don't have them. No. <laughs> you got the range. Uh, no, I don't have the range, especially now three, one. I don't think anyone saw that coming. I mean, Toronto, they, you never know. They surprised me last night coming yeah. back. Um, it was a pretty interesting series. Um, it's all been pretty good except for the Nashville, Colorado series. But yeah. Poor. I mean, Nashville, I mean, not even, a you sniff. know, the, the, they got into an overtime game. Like if they could have found a way to win that yeah. one, at least they get a win out of it. But man, that team, holy cow. Yeah. Like this yeah, going to be unstoppable. I think this kill McCarr, man. Yeah. Oh, I mean, we know he's a special player, but good grief, man. It's yeah. He it's, makes it's, it look easy. He does make man, it. Look, does it's he exactly, make guys, he look, makes him look silly. I know it's, I mean, it's almost to the, you know, in basketball, it's always like you're, you're breaking guys ankles you yeah, know, yeah. He's exactly over. what it looks I mean, like this guy he's going one way and he's 180 stutter turn. step in the <laughs> forward going down beating the, D, <laughs> like. the goalies are doing a 360 in a net oh, he's man, it's, silly. It. it's crazy though but um it's it's i love this time of year i yep. wish the flyers were involved they're not but it's still fun to watch um the games are way chippier I oh like yeah that. i love that um Absolutely. you know it's it's just it's if you're going to introduce anyone into hockey, I think this is the time you, you have do to. it to watch have the to playoffs. See playoff hockey. Yeah, it's awesome. So, um, the the Kings interesting. Yeah, I know, too, right? Yeah. What's going to happen in uh, Canada there with 
if they go out riles again like oh, god man. you know our buddy biz and and, and uh, witter always are talking about it you know they're going back and forth but i know if edmonton loses this series what Maybe, do you do man i don't know it's uh it's devastating for canadians it, that's what i mean Canadian it's, hockey you know like you just i'm just rooting for just for that reason i love Connor mcdavid obviously but right. uh but then you got Toronto. Toronto is uh, is finding a way uh, up three two in the series. Yeah. Snuck it out last night, and you know, I don't know, I don't know where it goes. Obviously, going back to Tampa, game six. Yeah. Um, but you know, Canadians love their hockey, yeah. and you need uh, to me. It's best for the game is having more Canadian teams obviously go further in the playoffs. Yep. So we'll see, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I Toronto's just, definitely surprising me right now. Yeah. I, and I love in all the, the Canadian cities, how they have the people outside. Of oh the man, they're crazy. Not that they had, they don't in a few spots in the U S but it's, it's a different. It's, animal different. Up there. it's different. And it it's really cool to see. Yeah. Like when, when they do that, man, I mean, you can just tell the love of the game, but I'll tell you what, you'd have some people losing their minds. I know if Edmonton does not get out of this first round, <laughs> I know. I mean, I and, know, and they still could. Easily. They still could they for sure. Still could, but you got to give LA credit. Oh man. yeah, of course. They're, I mean, and, and quick, he's played unbelievable. You don't want that guy to get hot. He proved that twice. Oh my god! <laughs> no <laughs> you kidding. know, but uh, and they're playing without Drew Doughty. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we don't need to go through everything, but like, uh, it is interesting, and um, I'm actually looking forward to that game tomorrow night in LA to see if if they find a way to upset Edmonton. Yeah. It's an upset in my book. It's a, yeah, it's an upset for sure. We will see, Nast. Yep. Well, I think we're ready to rock episode 73. Yes. With our man, AJ Galanti. What a beauty, man. This He's guy's awesome. Beauty. He's awesome. And this episode was presented to you by Cureleaf. Cureleaf.com. Medical marijuana dispensaries in Pennsylvania. Nast, you got some pain and inflammation. I do. You? I have it. Yeah, taking care of it. Oh, my arm. Yeah, I broke my arm. <laughs> you taking care of it? You're looking pretty limber. Yeah, yeah, I feel pretty good, man. You yeah, know? beautiful. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I like, yeah, like to hear know. that. I'm not doing any yoga, but yeah, well, jumping on the cure leaf. You look good. Wagon. Yeah. There you go. Take care of that pain. Check them out at cureleaf.com, pain management, and all kinds of other management tools for you in the toolbox nasty's got the pain management tools also got the giggles i do now <laughs> check them out cureleaf.com episode 73 let's go nas let's go baby welcome back i'm riley cote and i'm derek settlemeyer and this week we are absolutely thrilled to have on the former president and gm of the danbury trashers along with now in the boxing game for 11 years you got your hand in everything, Mr. AJ Galante. What's up, brother? How you guys doing? Thanks for having me. Oh, man, we're, we're uh, it's our well. privilege to have you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really looking forward. Really, I've been looking forward to this one, you know, so I, I, thanks for having me. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I'm not even sure where to begin. You got your hands <laughs> dipped in a bunch of stuff. I mean, you got the. Uh, you got the Danbury Trashers back in the day. Um, and just talk about maybe start with what you're up to right now, and we'll work backwards. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it's 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 probably you know as I get older, I'm 35 now, man. It's like the past eight months I've been seeing this documentary of me as a little teenage kid, and I feel like it, I feel like it's a thousand years ago, and I'm like, man, I got old. But um, you know, it's it's my life, like you just said, kind of. I feel like the Tasmanian devil sometimes I'm all over the place. I, I, uh, I kind of, I, I tell people ever since the trashers, I mean, it's really been go, go, go. It's, it's really, I've never really had a plan. Right. So it's like, I wake up and it's like, all right, I'm in boxing now or all right, we're doing ice wars now or all right. You know, it, it's, it's kind of a stressful way to live. And it's kind of the way I've learned to go about it, man. I mean, um, you know, I've been in, in professional boxing now 11 years, um, you know, as a manager or player, you know, fighter agent, you know, um, you know, uh, promoter marketing. I, I got a gym here in Danbury, right by the ice arena. We used to play with the trashers um, and uh, yeah, just gearing up for, um, you know, our inaugural event for, for uh, prize fighting on ice, ice wars next week. So it, I'm, I'm super excited for it. Uh, something different. 
I always seem to find myself in these weird controversial positions. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know. I guess it's just, it is what it is. You know, I, I just think that's just um, why I was put here, you know, have, have put, get my hands dirty. And, you know, like I said, this, uh, this whole ice wars thing, man, it's uh, I think the reason I know it could be very successful is because I'm scared to death of it. And uh, when I say that, it's like someone once told me, if your dreams don't scare you, then it's not big enough. You know, like if your dreams right. don't scare you, it's it's not. And this is one of those things where just like when my father and I announced the Trashers, um, it was met with so much 50-50. People loved it. People hated it. And um, listen, like boxing, again, we're coming full circle where everything kind of mashes together in my life. You know, when, when you have a reaction, at least, you know, you're doing something. So it's uh, something we've been working hard for the past, Jesus, 10 months now, putting this thing together. And um, I'll be honest, I'm scared to death because I just want it to go so, so well. And, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, hockey snobs out there that are a little a little upset about this. But um, I try to tell them, hey, listen, this isn't hockey. So what, what are you going to do? It's not. It's yeah, exactly. It's the new combat sport, right? Yeah. Is that what you're calling it? Yeah, listen, you know what? It, when, when we met with the original promotional group that did um, Battle of the Hockey Enforcers back in 2006 on uh, British Columbia, you know, when they were describing this concept to us, you know, I was thinking about it and I'm like, you know, I get it. It's hockey players. They're in hockey equipment, but there's no sticks. There's no pucks, no goals, no time, you know, so it's like I get it, but this isn't hockey. This is a combat sport and right. um, we're treating it as such. And, um, you know, my experience with boxing at this point, I, I kind of know the differences between a combat sport and, you know, a, a team sport. So I, I guess it's going to be kind of hard to convince those people that, that are so against the uh, physicality of hockey, you know, right. obviously we're kind of smearing it in their faces that it's still there. <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's kind of fun at the same, but at the same time, you know, we're trying to, we're, we're trying to get people, you know, look, we got to prove it with our actions. We got to prove it with the type of shows we put on, how we treat the fighters. Um, and I think, I think it's going to catch on a lot, a lot quicker than people think. And, uh, it's, it's going to become a guilty pleasure for a lot of those hockey snobs more than likely. I think so. I think you're right. Uh, I, we always say I, when, when you are at a real hockey game, and uh, two guys are getting ready to go at it. They drop their gloves. I, there's not one person sitting down when this oh, happens. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's it's like those things you you can't turn away from it. Like, and that's just no, human nature, right? No, it's 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 kind of like NASCAR. I mean, um, I'm not a huge NASCAR fan or race car fan, but if I'm scrolling on Instagram and I see a wreck, you know, you obviously you don't want anyone to get seriously hurt. But you know, I'll watch. I'll be like, oh, right. you know, what happened? Yeah, here? You know, yeah like, exactly. Uh, you know, growing up when I got into hockey, I mean, you know, Danbury wasn't really a hockey town when I first, you know, when I was growing up, you know, in the early 90s, um, you know, when, when I went to my first game, New Jersey Devil game against the Pittsburgh Penguins, I'll never forget it was 1993 or 94. And um, I remember Scott Stevens caught somebody and I was just like, oh, my God, I was hooked. <laughs> and, um, you know, Flyers, I mean, Philly yeah. and Jersey games. I mean, I used to I used to beg my dad to go to those games. I mean, you just knew Lindros, Stevens, uh, yeah. you know, you, you, you know, Philly had the Legion of Doom in the mid 90s. You know what I mean? Um, you know, the, the, the Devils, you know, you had Stevens, Danico, you know, and uh, yeah. it was fun. And that's what drew me. That's what drew me into the game. And um, obviously, I learned to like hockey as a whole, regardless. But really that's what drew me in and um you know there was characters back then too you know yeah, what i mean like, like when i knew like ty domi was coming to new jersey you know um i had to go you know because i knew that that melon head was going to get himself into something, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? and, um, and being a big professional wrestling fan growing up you know you're around character you know you see characters um i don't know it was just it just felt different back then so it's uh you know, same thing with Ice Wars where, you know, I'm it, with all the social media stuff with posts and the posters. I barely use these guys as real names. I've been using their nicknames. I'm like, listen, <laughs> yeah. we got to create you guys as characters, you know, because yeah. um, it, it's different. You know what I mean? I mean, 
who wants to see, you know, the same thing, AJ Galanti versus Riley Cody, you know, look, yeah. whatever Riley, you know, it's nicknamed, like today I put up, I got two kids and a single bout. One guy's nickname is Patty Whack, and one guy's nickname is Haymaker. So it's like Patty Whack and <laughs> yeah. Haymaker. That's and uh, you know what? People, people like it, man. They're like, yeah. oh, this is crazy. And, um, you know, that's what it's all about, trying to create something different and uh, hopefully entertaining. Exactly. Well, if there's one, you know, a couple of things that you know well is fighting, entertainment, and and promoting, right? I mean, you're promoting boxing from back yeah, in the day with the Danbury Trashers. You're a promoter, essentially. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know that, well. I, I as I've gotten older, I've realized, wow, that was really kind of the trashes was kind of my crash course into like promotion because that's really what it was, man. It was um, but a similar similar concept when when my dad kind of said, hey, this is what we're doing. Again, not a huge hockey town. And it's like, man, how are we going to get people to come? Um, plus, our proximity to New York City, you know, during the weekends, people go to the city, they go to sure. New York, um, even to Philly. I mean, people go to it's close. So how do you get people to want to come to your, your, you know, your games? And um, a lot of that is marketing. A lot of that is um, finding the right guys to fit the bill, too, because, you know, I think Riley will tell you what I've learned, and I didn't play hockey at a at a super high level, but you know I learned, you know that enforcer's code, and I learned there's guys that hey, it's their job, they do what they got to do, they may not necessarily like it, but then you got some nut jobs like John Morasti who like it. <laughs> so, yes. Yep. So what I used to do is try to find the guys that really enjoyed the fighting, like like because you know again I get it, you know I started learning. Um, Guys know when, you know, they got to they got to stand up for their team. Oh, you know, this guy ran our goalie two weeks ago. So I get it. Some guys don't want to do it, but they know that's how they stay in the lineup. But my goal, you know, our goal as a trashers was trying to find those guys that uh, took their took their ranking seriously on those message boards. And who's number one? <laughs> right. and, uh, and I tell you, man, it was a uh, interesting batch of guys for sure oh yeah he did a hell of a job oh there, my man. god unreal <laughs> especially at the young age i mean getting thrown into that it, i couldn't even imagine when i was 17, 17 years like, old i couldn't even figure <laughs> out how to tie hey, my own shoes you I mean. know we, we were talking we were talking earlier and i remember back in the day because i had a, a lot of your guys uh you know with the flyers and phantoms uh, in philadelphia yeah. And I remember Dave McIsaac talking about you guys, and he was just like, dude, it's awesome there. I love it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. But we're watching the show, uh, the Netflix show, and um, me and Raleigh were just talking about this before we were we were on with you. I don't think I laughed harder <laughs> than when the, the commissioner's talking. Now, obviously, you know the show, the beginning yeah. of the show, and then he goes, and everything seemed fine until. <laughs> <laughs> and they, and you know, they go to you and put, you're a guy, you're a kid, man. That's how we all were. Like, oh, it was, no, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, fell it off was the so couch. <laughs> it was so, it was so funny because, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it was a great style, but that was a style back in those days. How sure it was 100%. And, uh, it, it's so funny because, um, Netflix actually filmed that. So, so the documentary came out August of 2021, they actually filmed it in 2019. And okay. uh, then because of COVID, it got pushed and pushed. And I remember a week before the documentary came out, I started really thinking about it. I'm like, oh, man. I was like, part of the deal was I used to, I had to give them all our home videos and stuff like that. And they would get like B-roll and stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, man. I, it started <laughs> clicking like, oh, they're going to get me good with some of this stuff. <laughs> and uh, kid, yeah, the next, the, the next the next day I came into the gym and, you know, there's so many young kids in here and, uh, oh, they were they were killing me for, you know, how I used to dress. And I said, listen, listen, you guys wear everything too small. We wore everything too big. Yeah, it's right. That's the truth. Yeah. I'm so it was, it was, I was, it was so funny. So, so funny. And uh, honestly, that was legitimately how it, you know, that's, you know, Commissioner Brosal when. I remember when he saw me, it was exactly that. I mean, it was like, oh, my God. And uh, <laughs> you know, it, was, it was so funny. Oh, oh man, I that's incredible. My, I laughed my ass off. And then right away, you know, I, I, you see one of your guys you had up at the podium, Garrett Burnett, uh, you know, God rest his soul. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and then Frankie's in the beginning there. Yeah. And, and obviously Dave McIsaac and some other guys that we've run across over the years. And 
But what a story, man. And what a show. It was really well done. And the, the way you handled yourself, I mean, seriously, like you got the New York Times, you get ESPNs coming to you. You're 17 years old. I would have just been like staring. At yeah, I know. Like, what the fuck is going on, man? Like, but it's it's actually amazing, man. Props to you. No, I, no, I appreciate it. And, and honestly, like, um, you know, again, when, you know, that that old Broad Street bully mentality, you know, I, I we I did a lot of studying on that, too. And um you know, Philly's always been known as a fight town, you know, and, sure. and I, I tell people not just saying this, but, um, you know, even in boxing, I tell people don't match your fighter up against a Philly guy because <laughs> of the, the Philly guys have to me, Philadelphia as a whole is the, the best boxing city in terms of who they have. And, um, you know, I, I tell people, you know, I tell like young managers or guys that just getting into the game. I'm like, listen, if a promoter offers you a guy from Philly, who's like, three wins, eight losses. Don't take that fight because <laughs> that record doesn't mean anything. And, um, but yeah, I've always been a fan of, of Philadelphia and um, I, I'm there occasionally for boxing and, and I have some friends in boxing there, but yeah, that broad street bully, um, you know, cause a, a lot of times people associate the trash as like, Oh, it's a real life slap shot movie. Yeah. The funny thing was, the funny thing was, and people don't believe me. I'll take a lie detector test. I never watched Slapshot the whole way through. I wasn't, I, I, people are like, oh, they got the idea from Slapshot. We didn't really get the idea from anyone. But if anything, we try to model it more off the Broad Street Bullies than yeah. that Slapshot, you know, because um, that was real. It wasn't a movie, you know. So, uh, yeah. Matter of fact, I think I think Dave Schultz actually coached in the UHL the second season of the Trashers. And um, he did coach. Yeah, there. he did. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure our section 102 gave him a hell of a night one time. And, uh, <laughs> exactly. He wasn't too. He wasn't too. He wasn't too happy. I remember that. I, I might actually have footage of that somewhere. I swear to God, I remember him coming in, and I remember meeting him and a nice guy. And man, our our fans just just gave it to him pretty good. And, yeah. and you could tell he was like turning red and you can see like the veins popping out and, <laughs> yeah, what to do yeah it's, it's 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 a lot easier to chirp him when he's a little older but uh it, it was funny <laughs> yeah it's funny uh speaking of uh old guys like dave mcisaac's coaching uh the yeah, what are they called the, now the hat tricks what are they they're called so yeah, they, the hat tricks right yep the hat tricks yep so riley actually signed for a game this year but it ended uh -huh. up not working out because of his uh his daughter being sick uh, uh -huh. but I saw footage, uh, I don't know if it's on Facebook, but Max, like, all calm behind the bench in his suit and everything, and there's a scrum at the end of the game. I don't know if you saw it. Max just quietly walks onto the ice and just grabs a hold of a guy, and he's trying to chuck <laughs> I'm like, you're a fucking coach, Mac. You can't be doing Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it never, it never, it, listen, it never leaves you. I don't think it ever yeah. leaves those guys, and, uh, yeah, he's um he's the best. It was you know, the hat tricks, they got a nice organization. They, they, they really, um, they're doing a good job here. And I went to a lot of games this season and seeing Mac and some of the guys, it's, it's always, it's always great. Mac was, man, I tell you the best shootout percentage of the trashers ever was Dave McIsaac. I he believe had, it. Man. He's got the softest he hands. He yeah. Soft hands. He, yeah. People like, you know, he, he's like a vending machine on ice out there. He's a big guy, <laughs> but I'm telling you, he was like our first or second shootout option, I remember. And um, he used to go low, short side. I mean, I'm telling you, his shootout percentage had to be in the 90%. It was uh, – I believe I joke it. with him to this day about it. He he was uh, – he had a shot. Yeah, I believe it. I've, I've seen him, you know. He play, yeah. played, you know, seven fifteen years in Voorhees. And I, I think it's his, like, deceivingly slow approach, too. Yes. Right? You know, he's, he's got really so soft hands, but he's really slow and nonchalant and casual about it. Very, where he catches very, people very, very, off. Guys, I always sure. I, and, and he knows it, too, because I, I was talking to him during the playoffs a month or so back. I was like, hey, man, I was watching some old uh, footage. I used to have my little camera, and I'm like, you, you hit a lot of shootout goals. And he kind of winked at me. He says, I won the shootout in practice today. So he's like, he, uh, <laughs> he still got it. He, he's got more pride over that than any of his, you know, big fights. So it, it's funny. AJ, when he was playing here with the Phantoms and uh, we won a championship in uh, 96, 97, or I'm uh, sorry, 97, 98, the second year of the, uh, the Philadelphia Phantoms, Billy Barber was a coach who played on the Broad Street Bully uh, teams. Uh, Mac had a fake slapper 
and we all laughed, <laughs> but it worked. It was the slowest yeah. thing ever. <laughs> and guys would just go dive and he would toe drag around him. And yeah. it worked. I mean, every single time. And we would just die on the bench. Like, how do they not know the fake slappers coming? Yeah. But you he, just, he's got, yeah, he's got to be. He's very deceptive for sure. That's, that's for sure. And uh, I, I don't know if he ever told you, but I, I'm a big wrestling fan as well. Um, and uh-huh. by the way, your birthday party when you were younger, like I don't know how you said, <laughs> I'm kind of like, this, is it, this may not be normal for most kids. And I, no, it's not. To have the rock, have the rock show up. in China uh, and everybody there. But uh, <laughs> me and Mac, we ended up becoming friends with a couple of wrestlers. Um, uh-huh. They were in Philly and the one night uh, Paul Bear was there, Edge and Christian, they're Canadian oh, guys, yeah. but um, I don't know if you remember the blue mean he had a quick little oh, run. Yeah, but so bro, he's, I love, yeah, he's so he's best, from here. Man. So he's bro. sitting beside the bench. So we start talking to Max like, I got to get in a fight. I got to do something. And his nickname here was Diamond Dave because he would do the Diamond, diamond Dave, Cutter. Yeah. He would do the Diamond Cutter. And you should have, and he was, he was trying to find anyone he could to fight. And he finally got one, and he must have done four diamond cutters. And these guys are going oh, fucking yeah. bananas. It Listen, was awesome. I, I, I remember the EC uh, twenty three hundred arena down there, ECW. Yeah. Oh, right, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, listen, I did a couple boxing matches down there, and uh, you know, ECW. Oh man, the Blue Meanie was the best. Stevie Richards, <laughs> all those guys. Yeah, yeah man. man. That's, uh, yeah, man. I, listen. If I didn't have so much family here, I, I love. I, I could land in Philly. I like Philly. That's my type of town for sure. Yeah, no doubt it is. Yeah, we seen you about a month ago. Yeah, walking out with Tony D'Angelo. What's your connection to WWE and and those guys? Well, currently in the storyline, I'm kidnapped right now. So yeah. you know, I, 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 if anyone asks, this was pre-taped like three weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, right. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you just talk about weird. Um, again, wrestling fan my whole life. I mean, used to do the whole backyard wrestling thing. Yep. Um, uh, I mean, I took it serious. There was a time where I, I legitimately thought I was going to be a wrestler. Like, a legitimately. Like, not all kids think that, but I was, like, serious. So, What was your nickname? What was your name? Chaos with a K. With a K. Oh, yeah. So yeah. It, was, it was K-A-O-S. And, okay. uh I was the only two-time champion in our little backyard wrestling circle. <laughs> <But> anyway, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and there was eight of us, four good guys, four bad guys. I was a bad guy. And, uh, you know, it, it's – I don't know. You know, I talked a lot about wrestling in, in the doc, and um, I remember WWE reached out maybe October of last year, and they were doing the SmackDown in Hartford, and they invited me uh, – invited us down. We went. It was fun. And – um then, you know, like WWE guys just started following trashers on Instagram and stuff. And actually the kid, Tony D'Angelo, um, Tony D'Angelo, you know, started messaging me and uh, he's in NXT and this and that. And we just became like little, you know, buddies talking here and there. And then uh, like two weeks before WrestleMania, actually, and I've never been to a WrestleMania, they, uh, the woman from the offices reached out to me like, hey, you know, would you like to go to WrestleMania? I'm like, Phew. Yeah, I was like, of course, you know, and, um, you know, so they got us two tickets. I went with a buddy of mine and um, it was funny, like three days before we left, they were like, well, since you're going to be down here anyway, you know, uh, you know, we, we want you to maybe uh, walk this kid. Don't t- you know who Tony D'Angelo is? I'm like, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know who he is. So they wanted me like to walk him down, you know, for his match at WrestleMania. I mean, I was like, I'll do anything you guys want me to do. I was like, I've been lobbying to go through a table for like a year. (laughs) So I'm like, yeah, let's do it. You know, I met him. Great guys. Walked him down. He ended up winning the fight. That was great. Blah, blah, blah. I thought I was done. Then like the next day, they were like, can we fly you to Orlando for this Tuesday's, you know, NXT taping? We want you to be. So I'm kind of like, I'm like, I'm like kind of his manager in a way but i'm not in like every week's taping and uh you know he's got the whole italian you know gimmick going and he, he we're we're currently uh we're currently fighting with the mexicans over there so now we, it's like it's like cartel versus mob shit oh, uh, excuse my language. and uh you know it's uh you know the 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 guys captured me two weeks ago so now I'm not being seen right now. And then last night, our guys captured one of their guys. So it's like, uh, it's like, a, it's a dream come true. Cause you know, just to be 
Um, you know, and, and uh, you know, listen, I tell them, like, look, give me 24 hours notice. I'll be anywhere you need me to be. I, I just, um, you know, you got you to gotta take advantage of the opportunities when you can. 100%. So you're just yeah. waiting for the call right now to see when you pop back on the <laughs> oh, scene? Listen, or? I don't know when they're releasing me, but I, I think it'll be. <laughs> I told them, like, look, I'm going to be in Canada next week, so you might have to delay it, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. <laughs> so I don't know, but uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. But I tell you what, being like, half involved with it man those guys and girls those i have so much more respect for wrestlers after like seeing what they do on a daily bit i mean these guys no work, joke you know? hey, yeah there's no i joke. mean it's like the, the cardio to do to run those ropes and and the listen i've always been a wrestling guy but man i, I have so much more respect for for the whole process is insane yeah yeah there's crazy. definitely uh a science behind what they do, not to mention the amount of uh, impact their body takes, you know, as, as, as staged as it is. I mean, the, the, there's no doubt uh, a lot of no. inflammation in those bodies. <laughs> I mean, those guys go through it. No, I, absolutely. I mean, just the, like you said, even like the simple back bumps on the ground, I mean, they just, you know, you, you start adding them up, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You start, you know, between practice. I mean, these guys work like 12, 15 hour days. They were telling me in NXT, especially because it's more developmental. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they got classes, promo class, uh, bump classes. I mean, it's, it's insane. And um, you just start thinking about all the miles they put on it. It, it adds up. Oh yeah. We, I was lucky. I was in hockey for 26 years. I, I was an equipment manager <clears throat> with the flyers uh, and in the phantoms as well. And I was lucky enough to get to meet a lot of uh, wrestling guys. Like my yeah. favorite's Ric Flair, yeah. and I've met him about five oh, times. Yeah. And and uh, we actually a few years ago with the Flyers, we the, after the game, the player of the game was I had a robe made, uh, Nature yeah. Board. And uh, <laughs> oh, but that's I've, awesome. I've, I've been able to meet him a couple of times. I grew up uh, in North Carolina, where the uh, NW, you know, NWA, yeah. Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat, all the, they maybe a little bit before you. You're a little bit younger than me, but yeah, man like i'm a huge huge wrestling fan so it's you know wrestling's like the circus it's like every kid <laughs> no matter what generation seems to experience it in one capacity or the other and uh yeah. i just love it man i just love uh you know what it's just uh it's i don't take it too serious like a lot of old wrestling fans are like oh it's not the same i'm like yeah it's not this nothing's the same you know what right, i mean yeah, I'm like, right. I'm like, exactly you can't go into it thinking you're gonna see stone cold in the rock pop out of nowhere you know it's just, yeah, just yeah. Kind of, Try to enjoy what's here now, but uh, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, th those guys do though. To, like you're saying, they take a beating. Oh, I, I remember beating. one night we were waiting to move in, and uh, and this is going back a few years, but um, road and, uh, the road warriors, uh, yeah, were, were you know one of them has passed, but uh, they had at the end when they went off. It was a Monday Night Raw, and when they went off air, everyone came to the ring. They had this huge melee. Well, it was so loud. The one guy's back popped out. Well, I don't know if it was, I can't remember which one of the road warriors it was, but he got picked up and slammed and it, by Bradshaw when Bradshaw oh, was yeah. not, not in the cowboy hat. He looked like blackjack mulligan. But anyway, yeah. he's coming out of a locker room and my medical guy was with me, <clears throat> Chris Felix, the cat man. And he's, this guy could barely walk. He's pulling his bag and he's like, Hey buddy, you're all right. And he's like, you need a hand, you know, like it was before yeah. they really had trainers traveling with them. Yeah, yeah. And Bradshaw came out on the other side and he's like, you're okay. And he goes, yeah, I was trying to tell you, don't slam me. My back went out, but he's like, you couldn't hear me. It was so loud. So yeah, his back yeah. had gone out. He got slow. Oh, I'm like, how's this guy going to wrestle tomorrow night? <laughs> yeah. Cause they, yeah. you know, they had Monday night and they had Tuesday night, 100%. whatever that was. I mean, it was, it was crazy, but they, they, yeah. they take a beating, man. Oh yeah, hundred percent. What's what's the future for the Trashers brand that you've created? I mean, I feel like you, you got something there. Um, I mean, is I it is back in you hockey know, or is it this is this the like, fight world here or what do we got? It, it's like I have no idea. It's it's um, you know, it's so amazing to me. Like you know, it, it, the Trasher name like pops up fifteen years later. You know what I mean? And um, it, it's become it, it's to the point now where like some people don't even associate it with hockey. It's just like a, a like a, like a brand. It's like, like people yeah. love the logo. They love the, they love like the grittiness of the story. And uh, it's like, um, it's crazy. I don't know. I mean, um, you know, like we, we, you know, where I could see it going possibly is um, 
you know, we, we sponsored a little, like an eight year old team locally, a little junior trashers team. And um, I posted that on Instagram and I must've gotten a dozen messages from coaches all over. Like, Hey, we want to be a junior trasher team and this and that. Oh, and cool. uh, it's cool to see, you know, to give back to the kids. And uh, that's what, that's what it's all about. We got them like the, the real, you know, jerseys and you know, the, the, the socks, the everything. So it's, yeah. uh, they, they look, they look sharp out there and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, you know what, like I said in the beginning, I have no expectations for anything. I just wake up and wherever we're going, we're going, you know what I yeah. mean? And uh, it's a weird way to kind of look at it, but you just, you just never know. I mean, uh, the dream would be to somehow get us into the NHL video game, because I always used to try to create the trashes on video games oh, and stuff, super but, cool. uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I, you know what? They probably would, man. I mean, it's it's such a big deal now. Uh, I agree. It's crazy. I feel like, you know, since the documentary, too, like you mentioned, like it, like the, the Trashers brand is like superseded hockey. It's, it's you know, like you, you, you could so be a. Weird. It's so weird. It's it, You're right. I mean, and, and I don't like to say stuff like that because I don't want to seem cocky, but it's true. I mean, I have so many people. um it just, it just becomes such a thing. I don't even know how to explain it. I never would have expected it to be this way. Um, it's a super humbling thing. And just trying to use all this, you know, whether it's 15 minutes or not of fame to, to try to give back and do different things. And, you know, it's not, you know, you don't know the buzz may not last forever. Um, it might, who knows, you know, like we said, slap shot, you know, I still see guys with chiefs jerseys, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, right. um, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know where it's going to go, um, but uh, who, who knows? Who knows? Uh, you know, if uh, I don't know if Gary Bettman would like it, but you never know. Maybe we <laughs> pop up in the NHL one day. Who the hell knows? It would be pretty funny. We're open to all calls. A hundred percent. Well, you're, you're, you know, you're doing the right thing. Obviously you got uh, the Intel, you know, the, the marketing and the branding intelligence, the promoter intelligence, and, and you've, you've partnered and collaborated with, you know, biz and some big names in hockey. So like you said like all these opportunities keep popping up. So, yeah. you know, wish you the well, best and all that, yeah, because man. it seems like there's more opportunity down the road for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, like I said, you know, you, you can't, you can't get too high or too low with anything you do. You know, right. like I said, you know, like six months ago, it was so crazy with the, tra you know, cause the trash thing had just come out, you know, six to eight months ago. I mean, it changed my life in a way, my day to day life changed. And, um, but you can't always think you're on a pedestal for so long because eventually it's going to die down and sure. it's going to get old. So, you know what, you look at ice wars that we are creating as a way to kind of use the trashers to springboard into something different and new and, um, kind of just keep momentum going and see, see where it goes. hundred percent. You know, with your, uh, the ice wars coming up, which is, going to be amazing I, I like how you went with your uh your judges as well because you like i think i heard you say before dealing with boxing everybody uh, knows like i'm not a huge I, I i like boxing i don't understand everything but i feel like every other big match there's some sort of uh yeah you know, issue with, yes with, with with judging it's 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 you know it's um when i got into boxing like 11 years ago I couldn't get over how crazy the sport really is and um, just how stupid it is. I hate to say <laughs> it. I mean, um, you know, like you said, I mean, uh, it's it just, just so, I can go on forever about all the issues. And the thing that drives me crazy personally is the majority of these issues can be fixed. Like, it's not that difficult to, to you know, make some of these switches that would change the sport. But it's driving people away because, like you said, it's such stupidity all the time. And, um, you know, boxing's my day to day. But you know what? I said, you know what? With Ice Wars, we'll take a lot of these things that I think is wrong with boxing and move it over to this. And, and you know what? It might it might help what we're trying to do. Um, you know, like judges should be guys that have done it before. You know 100%. what I mean? I yes. Mean, you know, I mean, trust me, I, I swear to God, I could tell you stories. I mean, I've been, um, I've had fighters that have fought. You know, I had a fighter that main evented against Miguel Cotto once in Orlando. I've, I've been in Madison Square Garden. I've been in a high school basketball court in New Hampshire. I've been in all different levels of boxing. Um, 
I mean, I've been in situations where I've seen judges, swear to God, literally on their phones during, the fight, wow. you know, like during the fight. Oh, I mean, it's I can tell you stories and, um, you know, it's it's nuts. So I'm like, you know what? Listen, let's uh, let's put these the, these and not just older fighters, current guys. And, right. and um, you know, listen, this might sound a little WWF ish, but uh, listen, if uh if, if me and Riley are fighting and, and it goes to a decision and I get the wrong end of the stick and, and knuckles, you're, you're a judge and you're a current <laughs> fighter. And I feel like you gave me, you know, you, you stuck it to me. I can call you out to fight at the next ice wars. So, there you, you know, I'm like, That's you know, cool. as, ju- as judges, you gotta be a little, you, you can't get too funny because if you get called out, you know, yeah, right. right. You gotta yeah, it. you got to yeah. back it up. Okay, let's you know, just go like, on the record. I do not want to judge. <laughs> yeah, right. <no. laughs> I don't want to get called out. I don't know if you have a division you know, for buck fifty. Yeah. I don't think you have that. <laughs> but listen, you know, it's all about accountability. I mean, even sure. um, I was watching. I was watching it. You know, I'm a big Yankees fan. I was watching a Yankee game last night, and it was a bad call. I mean, it happens. But um, these umps, they they don't get held accountable for anything. I mean, they just they just you Protected know they, by they the just league. Hide. Yep. You know, like, you know, if, if, if uh, you know, Riley's played at highest levels. I mean, if, if he did, so, if he screwed up, he's got to go to his locker and have 10 cameras in his face. You know what I mean? Yep. These umpires, 100%. these umpires or referees or officials, you know, they make a mistake. They go, they pack their bag and get, they get the hell out of the arena. It doesn't matter, you know? Yep. So, you know, it's, it's little, little stupid wrinkles and details that hopefully we bring the ice wars that kind of separate us from, from the pack there. Yeah, you, you've also got our buddy Chris Terrian uh, commentating, oh, best, calling yeah. it Bundy. I don't know what you what you call him, but Mad Dog is what I used to call him. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, he uh, yeah, it's so funny because um, you know I never met him up until a few months back, and um, you know my 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 our partner with Ice Wars is like, yeah, I think uh, Chris Terrian's gonna come on board, and I remember the name from growing up. I'm like, oh yeah, you're a big guy defenseman, I think, or something, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then, you know, I didn't realize because I've been so out of the sport for so long, you know, hockey, is, that is. And, um, you know, what a great career he's had, you know, mm-hmm. outside the ice. And I'm like, wow, he's the perfect guy. I mean, be honest with you, I didn't think we'd get someone of that caliber to want to get involved right away with us. So we're, you know, super grateful to, to have him on board. And um, yeah, he's really I'm good. On TV. Yeah, he's really yeah, good. And, he, and, and I could tell he likes it. And um, you know, all the players, you know, when they see a guy like that's on board, they get excited. So. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, he's a great, great character guy. He knows the game, and he's been around. Obviously, yeah, the toughest of a, yeah, the toughest, toughest guys, guys uh, yeah. in in the league. You know, with the Flyers, yeah. and then he's played against too. So, um, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, it fits perfectly. Yeah, hundred percent. He connected us, so we appreciate uh, yeah. Bundy for 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 the hookup. And oh, absolutely, anytime. Man. Stuff, I but, I, uh, I like like I said, uh, you know, guys like Riley. What it, what he, in two, were you playing in 0405? Like 2004? 0405 was my first year in Philly. It was the lockout year, and we, we were at the yeah. Phantoms. Yep. I was at the Phantoms. Uh, yeah, see, you know, hindsight's 2020. We yeah. probably could have tried to sign you or something. Who knows? You know? <laughs> well, I started off in the Central Hockey League. So yeah. if, I, if you if you would have called me before Hexy called me, I probably would have landed up in Danbury. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, it's just funny. It's just funny to, uh, you know, it's That's funny true. to think back. You know, I tease, I actually, um, it's funny because, when the lockout became official, like official, official for the whole year, we actually tried to get Donald Brashear and Georges Larac just oh, because. No way. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, some. you know, Georges ended up not playing that year, but, but Donald ended up going to the Quebec league. That's right. And uh, I mean, I think he got a ton of money. Um, you know, not even our duffel bags could. Him over here. <laughs> yeah, you know? right. So, so, uh, but I remember, um, it's funny. I ended up doing an interview with Georges Larac a few months back. And I'm like, man, I was like, I forget the name of the agent, but you could have been on the trashers, you know? And he's like, Oh, if I would have known there'd be a Netflix thing, you know, maybe <laughs> yeah, I right. done it. but uh, it, it's funny to look back and um, you know, it's funny, you know, you got guys, you know, in our two years existence, you know, you have a guy that maybe we had for two, three games and uh, you know, that's like a badge of honor for them to say they played yeah. for us. And it's uh it's, it's cool to see that, you know, that they're, they're able to, however they can use that name to, to leverage something in their life. I, I hope they can do that. 
Yeah, I mean, you you did an amazing job looking at watching the the Netflix thing. It, it like those they, Roman Nadur, like yeah. I mean, he oh. was a big man. Oh yeah, like he yeah. was a he top the team. He was. He I mean, it. you had some. I mean, and not to mention Wingfield. I love the the very at the very beginning of the uh, the story. He's like your dad threw the the bag of money down and gets says to his uh, wife, well, I guess we're going to be in Danbury this year. (laughs) (laughs) And he looked like, I don't, I don't know him, but he seems like a man that enjoyed doing his job for sure. He was one of those guys that enjoyed, uh, and and I got to tell you something in all seriousness, you know what, what the only thing that the only criticism about the trashers back in those days that used to drive me nuts was um, because we had a lot of criticism, but the one that used to stick with me was, uh, you get these pundits that would be like, oh, it must be embarrassing for the skilled players to uh, be on this team. It couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah. These guys loved it. They're like, I remember um, a couple of guys were like, AJ, I feel like I'm on an Olympic sheet of ice. I got so much room. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, one's exactly. even, no one's even trying to poke check me. And um, the the other interesting thing that happened that really wasn't by design, but um. I mean, our depth chart with toughness was insane. And I remember, um, you know, Wingfield, Ruman Ender, even by a low as we had, they had like their own little system. Okay. Who's on tonight? Who, who's on patrol tonight? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and the, and the other guys got to play the game and, and they really were able, some of these quote unquote goons were able to show a different wrinkle to their game. And I got to tell you something, if you do the math, if you want hockey DB, if Brad Wingfield didn't get hurt that year, he put a couple suspensions in there. I'm telling you, he probably would have had 30 goals and like 500 something penalty minutes. I mean, wow. he was he was he was putting up video game numbers um, at the time he got injured. I mean, he was on the same line with Brent Gretzky, and uh, you know, it was it was crazy. If he didn't get hurt, I'm telling you, he would have had like a video game stat line. It was insane. <laughs> That's incredible. I love that they had a system. Yeah, yeah you take you guys are taking yeah, the night off. Was, we got we're it, on it patrol was almost tonight. like I, I felt like it was like rock, paper, scissors, shoot or something. You know what I mean? It was, it was, I wish was, I had that fun. luxury yeah. of doing that back in the day. I was, it was say, like on yeah. patrol every night. Most of those guys yeah. <laughs> most of the guys you mentioned, uh Brash and, and big George Larock there. Riley had some run-ins with them. He had a few tilts with both those guys. Oh, oh yeah. really? Yeah, that must have been fun, huh? Oh yeah, always <laughs> lots of fun. He's yeah, out, he's outweighed by he, he weighed about two twenty four when he was playing uh, with yeah. the Flyers, and and those guys were about two fifty six, two sixty. With Rock, I mean, oh, how much yeah. did he weigh? I don't even know what he weighed. But yeah, pushing two seventy. Yeah, sure. for sure. Well, no, well, listen, you know what? And again, I know it sounds a little silly to some people, but I've, like I said, from the start of my love for hockey was guys like Riley, guy, those guys that those are, first of all, you know, I tell people, you know, guys like Riley, you know, and I don't know him personally, but I could tell, you know, the enforcers are the best guys off the ice. You know what I mean? Like those are the guys the fans love. And, you know, I fell in love with those guys watching them growing up and, you know, Ice Wars, you know, like every event we want to honor, we kind of have our own little makeshift Hall of Fame. And uh, you know what? I want to honor guys that played that role that don't get that ceremonial goodbye when their careers are over. You know, it's all nice. You know, you got the Gretzky's, the Mario Lemieux's and God bless them. But you know what? Those guys don't have their security blankets. I don't know if they're putting up the numbers they're putting up in those days. And uh, you know what? I, I I always felt like you got to honor those uh, those blue collar knock around guys. Those were always the guys that I just were always um, drawn to. So, you know, uh, you know, our, our first, um, you know, our first Ice Warrior Legend ceremony and next week, you're going to have uh, Wingfield, Morasti, Bialois, um, Sean McMorrow, who played in yep. the Quebec Oh, League. Sheriff, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he's one of our commentators as well with Chris. Cool. And, yeah, he's uh, great. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Dean Mayran, who was uh, who actually won the 2006 Battle of the Hockey Enforcers. And he's, oh, he did. Uh, That's oh, right. Yeah, I remember he's that. A, he's a big, um, like, you know, minor league legend up in the Quebec League. So. Uh, so, yeah, no, I mean, uh, like 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 I said, I mean, I was growing up, you know, I, I always uh, were, were, were drawn to those guys, you know, the physical blue collar, get your nose dirty guys and um you know what? It's it's unfortunate that 
you know, and look, I'm not saying it's a good or a bad thing. It's just different. You know, the game is different from when I grew up. So, you know, like I said, I'm not saying it's worse or better or whatever. I'm just saying, you know, I, I always felt like guys like that were what made hockey what hockey was, you know, and um, yeah. You know, I, you know, those guys don't really get the ceremonial goodbye, you know, and um, hopefully, you know, with, with our sport, we're, we're going to be able to, to honor those guys and, and they get, you know, their chance in the sun there. And, um, you know, it's it, it can go a long way for guys. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, it's it, I, I have a feeling it's uh, slowly but surely Ice Wars will become, um, you know, something special. I, I think you're right. I, the, the, I, I think you're like Riley said, your, your marketing and everything that you've been able to do with starting with the, the trashers, um, you seem to know what you're doing. Um, but I got to tell you this, I know it's not this easy, but you got to bring it to Philadelphia, man. Could you imagine? Yeah, like, yeah, you, well, listen, that, that's, you know, that's what I'm saying is, uh, you know, uh, hopefully we'll be able to. So typically our quote unquote season will be anytime like mid April to the end of August. So, in a perfect world, and I know it's tough in Pennsylvania, we, we get regulated out there, and uh, Philadelphia is just a no-brainer. I mean, uh, you know, we'll, 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 we'll have the guys fight for cheesesteaks and stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, but then uh, 1 million percent, that's, um, you know, we got a board of potential host cities and landing spots. I mean, uh, I really I really hope we could get to Philadelphia. It would just be a no no-brainer for sure. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there, there's a whole niche market out there. You know, again, it's a combat sport. It's a big boxing city. And you know what? There's the old Broad Street bully fans that exactly kind of miss that. And, uh, you know, though it's a little different, it, it, you know, the fighting's not in the same vicinity as a game. I, I think it's still there. And, um, you know, it will be a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah I, I don't think you have anybody turning their nose up to it uh, at all. Yeah, uh, exactly. It's uh, this is really cool. I, I, I'm, I'm so excited for you guys for, you know, knowing, meeting you and knowing the other guys that we know involved with this. This is going to be great. No, I really appreciate the support. And yeah, like I said, I mean, I don't expect it to be perfect right off the jump, but I, I think once we get an event or two or three under our, uh, under our wings here, I think it'll, it'll start, we'll, we'll start getting that momentum and, um, you know, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Awesome. 100%. So May 21st, 9 p.m. Eastern time? Yeah, May, tw- May 21st, 9 p.m. over here on the East uh, on Fight TV, the Fight app, F-I-T-E. Um, or you can go to IWI Fights, our Ice Wars website. You can pre-order it there. It's 20 bucks. Uh, that way, if people don't like it, it's 20 bucks. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right? Right. So it's, it's not like an $80 boxing pay-per-view where two punches are thrown and then, you you know, <laughs> you hate yourself after. But uh, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's going to be must-see TV. We got some We got some hungry guys out there ready to go. No it's doubt. Awesome. It's awesome. Well, awesome, AJ. We appreciate you. Appreciate the time. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. And uh, like I said, Riley, you ever get the itch, man? You don't have to go through a whole, <laughs> whole training camp. You don't have to go through a camp and all this stuff. You know, you just you let let us know, or, or maybe even commentary. You never know. Yeah, exactly. Hey, we got a yoga a yogi division there for me. <laughs> <laughs> if he, hey, Squeeze in there with the buck seventies. Hey, AJ, if he if he does come back, I'm I'm his uh, manager. I'm Jim Cornette. I'm coming with a, a hey, tennis yeah. racket or something. I yeah. want to do it, man. Hey, that's what that's what you need. You got to have your hands <laughs> yeah. ready to go exactly we appreciate you man and best of luck yeah absolutely oh, thank you guys really appreciate it all, all right, right dude thanks, see you, thanks guys talk, talk to you soon, soon.